Hello and welcome back to Las Vegas for our coverage of the Gamma Trade Show 2016. I'm Eric Summer here with Nate Murray from IDW. Hello. Thanks welcome. for having me. Uh, so we have a lot of games to talk about, we but do. first we're going to start with this adorable tower of cats, which is a game called Cat Tower. A very appropriate. Yes. Yeah. So in Cat Tower, we were midway through, but in yep. Cat Tower, it's as simple as stacking cats on cats and hoping they don't fall over. And now you've set me up. Now you've given me this cute little astronaut cat. This is, uh, yeah, it's a first printing exclusive. So this just came out, and if you're buying this right now, you're getting your astronaut oh, no. cat. Oh, no. oh. Okay, so. And so, so that's what happens with the cats. It's so mean to the cats. Uh, I know, I have a cat. And Cat Tower's available now? Cat Tower's available right now. Awesome. It's uh, from Aza Chan. Uh, plays two to six players, a couple different variant play modes. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Okay. It, 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 it's, uh, it stops traffic when you have a box that cute in the, in the aisle. It, it's true. It, we've been demoing this game for almost a year and working really hard to get this paper craft right. Because yeah. Because that actually you need a really good specific lamination that's not going to crack. And so it's actually been a lot of development and we're oh. so happy to finally have it out on the market. It's doing really well. So awesome. That's Cat Tower and you can get that right now. Cool. Let's begin the parade of boxes because we've okay. got a lot of upcoming games we want to talk about. We do. Okay. Uh, let's start right here, which is a game that's got a lot of interest. Back to the Future. We'll yeah. be demoing this at the uh, booth later today. Excellent. But right now, if we're talking about this a little bit, it's going to be out. Uh, just hit the water, so it'll be out next month. Okay. Um, it's a great game, really well designed. I think time travel is one of the hardest genres to make. It is. We were just discussing. It's it's a yeah. difficult. It's hard to get it right, and we keep waiting for a game that's going to do it. Yeah. Is so, this the one? I think so. Uh, so what you're doing in the game is jumping between the three timelines that are outlined in the Back to the Future uh, first two movies. So 1955, okay. 1985, and 2015. Gotcha. And you begin the round with some role selection. So you'll take the role of George or Biff or Marty. Um, and that's going to inform what kind of cards you can play that turn. And so you'll play Marty or George or Biff into one of the timelines in order to complete key moments from the films. Hmm. So you might get, you might want more Marty on stage playing at the dance, or you might need to steal the almanac, or things like this. And then playing these characters into the timelines affects things moving forward. So you see this ripple through time, and you're paying a ripple cost. Uh, into a, a, a pile essentially. So every time you play someone back, you have to pay things forward as the timeline would change. So really nice design. Uh, the marker that's going to move you through the timelines is of course a DeLorean. Of course. Uh, a very thinky. I, it's a, a really, it revs up nicely. It's uh, two to four players. Probably about 45 minutes your first play, and then that's going to come down. You're going to be looking at about 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, really, really interesting game. I love the art as well. It's nice. Uh, yeah, really creating scenes from the movies. Yeah. 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 Bob Gale, the uh, the producer for Back to the Future, was involved in every uh, element. Um, he <laughs> so much so that he was picking reference for mailboxes and sending them to us and making sure that we were following the right timeline. And he was picking art and all that. Okay. So uh, the team behind Back to the Future has has been watching this come through the whole way. So it's oh, really, nice. it's been really a fun project to work on. And like I said, I, for me, time travel was, it's very difficult to do as a film. Back to the Future is one of the ones that does yeah. it fun, does it well because it's such a personal story, and the game follows that. So it, it's gonna, it makes, it, it makes the. Um, it should make everyone proud who, who's a fan. Excellent. So that'll be great. And the first 5,000 copies come with an actual Hot Wheel DeLorean that you can use as your marker. Wow. So that's okay. pretty fun. There you go. Next up, what do we got? All right, next up, uh, this is out this week. So this is an expansion, and this is called X-Files Trust No One. So it's an expansion to the X-Files board game. Okay. Uh, which is a one verse mini game by Kevin Wilson. Uh, it's a quick play game, 45 to 60 minutes, that sees you playing as agents or the smoking man. Mm -hmm. The agents are in the first game, they're going around the board closing cases from seasons one through three. Right. We've now expanded that to seasons four through six. Okay. Which uh, brings in more of the monsters of the week. So some of the that's when they started getting into those really fun episodes uh, that saw really famous characters that stuck with the mythos, like uh, Tombs, uh, especially the Peacock family. Okay. And so this expansion introduces those characters, and they and it brings a new mechanic in which um, in the old game 
the smoking man was playing cards face down, kind of as a trap mechanic. Right. Yeah. And it was a uh, you were bluffing and trap uh, and and trapping players. Now, when you have these more powerful monsters of the week, you play them face up, and they do more damage and and can move from region to region even. So it adds a lot of dynamics to it. There's a sideboard now for cases beyond the United States hmm. uh, because they started to travel more. I think the budget went up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Four through six. So they started to travel more. So we've incorporated that. Uh, okay. Kevin again is a huge X Files fan. So all the flavor and all the little details and Easter eggs uh, are, are still in here. There's still a major Easter egg that no one has picked up in this game that we hid in season in the first one. Oh! If anyone ever tweets at us and figures it out, I'll send them a free any game from IDW. Uh, that bounty has been going for more than a year. No one's ever figured it out. Wow! Uh, so okay. I guess I hid it too well. I didn't think I did. You said this is very soon. This is this is soon, if not now. Excellent. And you've shipped to distributors. Did we say Back to the Future when, when we're expecting that? That's going to be about a month. It's on the water right now. So, uh, okay. This is a major, let's go the with a God major, Father. yes. Okay, so this is a major show announcement. Mm. Uh, this is the Godfather and New Dawn. This is an area control battle for New York. 1950s New York. Okay. You play as the head of one of the major crime families and you are sending out your thugs to take over different uh, boroughs. Uh, truly amazing game. So this is our second Godfather game. We have a mafia style game out right now mm -hmm. that people can pick up. Um, I'm very proud of it. it well, my name's on the front of the box. So. <laughs> but uh, that game introduces a couple new wrinkles to the mafia genre, mm -hmm. including a, a, a dawn roll that's an offer you can't refuse where you could wake up from a night phase with a horse head in your bed. Nice. Uh, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. But this game uh, blew me away. It's from uh, Jay Cormier and Sen from uh, uh, God, yeah, Lane. That's right. Uh, so they are um, the designers of Orphan Black Forest, but they turn this in. It's a great uh, dice combat area control game um, in which you're using your dice to build sets, and then you're also alternating uh, by muscling out each other who's going to be the Dawn at any given time. And the Dawn gets to demand a favor from everyone at the beginning of the round, and that favor will come in the form of dice okay. that you have to give to him, and he'll be able to use those to take over different areas. Uh, okay. There's a Vegas component to it. There's everything you want. This is really this is going to be dynamic. It's it's going to blow people away. Um, it's coming out. We'll have the first copies landed for Origins. Okay. So yeah, so we're we're that will be the show debut. Um, we're focusing everything around it. We're gonna invite re retailers to a cannoli party the night before the show. <laughs> so a lot of energy behind this one. We're really proud of it. Excellent. Uh, it's the Godfather and New Dawn. I think this will be the the light area control game for the next few years that that will hit the table the most for everybody out there. Excellent. So, yeah, big. All big right. Stuff. I have a hanker for some pizza. Okay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's a new Kevin Wilson design. This is. This is, so the story behind this game is uh, when we first started working with Kevin, he was very excited to do X-Files, but he told us, go get the Turtles game license, and I will give you a masterpiece. And that was maybe two and a half years ago, and he's been working on the game since then, uh, and we've been working to get him the license. So over that whole time, wow. and every communication with him ended with, and go get the Turtles license. And go license. get the Turtles license. And go get the Turtles so this license. is really a labor of love for This is Kevin. absolutely, for him and for the whole team, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this is our, our flagship. This is the game that um, we've got years worth of expansions planned. Okay. Um, yeah, IDW's Turtle series, uh, the, our comic series, is past issue 50. It's our longest running book. Uh, it's award winning. It's absolutely amazing. It celebrates 30 years of Ninja Turtles. It's It still involves the original co creator, Kevin Eastman. Mm -hmm. And he kind of oversees all the scripts and all wow. that. And this game is based off of that. So it's a miniatures combat scenario game uh, in which, again, it's one versus many. One character will be controlling uh, either Shredder or uh, IDW created villains like Old Hob, who's a mutated alley cat, who's okay. probably my favorite character. Um, Karai, who I think has shown up in several versions of the Turtles at this point. Um, Shredder Sh uh, Shunin, I don't know word. Uh, anyway, and then the rest of the, the uh, players will be either a Ninja Turtle or a hero like Casey or yep. April or Splinter. Excellent. Um, what's really fun in this and what's new and what reinvigorates the genre is there's a dice sharing mechanic. So each hero player has their own set of action dice. And what they're going to do is they're going to roll their dice at the beginning to start a round, 
and then they're going to orient them depending on who's sitting to their sides. And the reason they're doing that is if you're sitting to my right, the dice I put closest to you, yeah. you can use on your turn. So if we look at each other's dice and we look at the board setup and we know that you're going to go in and take a big thwack at Shredder, right. I can put a melee strike for you to give you that additional power on your turn. Okay. If I'm going to stand back and you know try and do some range support, you can give me range support. Or if I've been getting my my tushy kicked a little bit, you can help me out with some defense. Nice. So it's really tactical. Um, the way the play alternates, it's not in player order. It's just whoever's ready to go essentially. So if we're seeing a certain setup, we can change which hero is going to go. Who at goes one in point. first? Yeah. Yeah. And what that does is it eliminates uh, down. Time because we're always, even when it's your turn, me and the rest You're of the team strategizing are strategizing, next. okay, who should go next? Okay. And then the villain is playing uh, card-based, so they have a hand of cards that will allow them to activate any unit they want, and then they can also desperation activate if need be, so that they're never left out not being able to do something they want to do. So it really it shores up a lot of things that I think in a uh, this style game maybe ha have been weaknesses before, and those are all shored up now. Um, it's quick to set up. There's not too much fiddly equipment management or anything like that. All you need to know is who won the last scenario, and that's enough. You'll get one side will get a buff. That's it. Oh, interesting. Uh, the way that you go into battle and customize out your character is through a special move deck, and you're gonna pick how many. You'll be given a stat of how many special moves you get. For that mission, you'll go through the special move deck, choose which ones you want. That's it. So I play as Leonardo typically. I like to load him out um, in a way that kind of lets him charge into battle and suck in enemies so that they can't break away mm -hmm. and then let everyone else kind of pinpoint that. So I build him out that way. There's ways to build out differently. You can be much more agile. Um, and that's all very quick to customize. You don't have to track a lot of these things. So it's more pick up and play. If one of your campaign mates can't make it for a session, it's not this, this big loss to not have that character. I don't know about you, but I've played this genre game for years, and I have a lot of rangers and paladins abandoned in dungeons that may, <laughs> that may never come up. back because that campaign dried up. Okay. Uh, with this, you can just replace and swap someone out much easier. Excellent. There's there's one data point to remember. Who won the last mission? So really fun. Like I said, years of expansion content, uh, all based around the IDW universe. So the box is hitting in July. Uh, the first small hero packs will be two months after that. Oh, great. And then the first large expansion is called City Fall. And and that'll be as fast as we can make it. Uh, we're working on it now. That, that introduces some major characters and major plot points. Um, Kevin's working on introducing full co-op for that expansion so that you know heroes can play completely um, you know, just against the game. So a lot of really fun stuff. Everything from this point on will be going straight to retail. Uh, you know, there was definitely some online pre-marketing, but that was a one-off just right. to kind of build the base. And from here on out, it's all just retail focus and uh, nonstop. This is called, we got, this is like the BMW of the IDW line. This is, this is the <laughs> one. So okay. a lot of focus on this brand. So very quickly, you had a couple other things you wanted to talk about. Yeah, this is uh, this is something that's a lot of fun. And once again, let's mention Kevin Wilson. Yes. Uh, so this is Awesome Kingdom the second. This is Awesome Kingdom Mines and Labyrinths. Uh, I had no influence on the mines being called the Mines of Murray. I swear. <laughs> I thought it was a compliment, and then I saw the art for the character, and not so much. Uh, this, so this is our tongue-in-cheek dungeon crawl. Okay. It's a very quick play, 20 minutes. Uh, you're moving through a dungeon. Limited turns, so the game has a nice endpoint, which I think is nice when you're doing satire dungeon crawl. Uh, it doesn't overstay its welcome. You're going to get in, you're going to have nine total turns to collect loot and be the most awesome adventurer you can be. So uh, you might be the uh, Rage Baryon or the Paladude or the Rockineer. <laughs> okay. uh, it's all very silly, it's all very fun. The art on this game is uh, some of the best I've, I've seen in gaming just for fitting the brand. It's really fun. So check this out. This will be on shelves. Um, this summer, okay. and it has two standalone dungeons that you can alternate between, or you can use the dungeon from the first uh, Awesome Kingdom as well. Okay. So, Awesome Kingdom Mines and Labyrinths that we have this summer. And you had uh, some pre-art from pre -art. Uh, announcement you were making here. This is a major show announcement. Can you guys see that? Okay, so this is a big box game from Jonathan Gilmore. Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, the team behind Dead of Winter. Yes. It's called Wasteland Truckers. Uh, it's a pick up and deliver game in a post apocalyptic future. 
um, it, it's it's insane. I don't know. Let's see if we can swipe through. Uh, the art, as you can see, is beautiful, and the gameplay matches the art. Um, if you can see a little bit of this here, so the artist is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much of this is is uh, fit for PG. <laughs> it's the Deadpool of board games. I mean, it's hard. Okay. R. It's hard R. So oh. come in expecting serious, wild violence. Uh, excellent tight design and a whole lot of fun. It's got 10 oversized miniature trucks in the box. You're picking up toxic waste and doing all kinds of wild stuff. Uh, a bunch of different factions who I think we just flipped through. I didn't want to stay on that art too long yeah. depending on who's watching the live stream. Uh, what, how soon do we see it? Uh, we're, we're racing for Gen Con, I believe. So that's that's the goal right now. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot in this box, but there, it's a whole lot of fun. And if you've been wanting an adult adventure, okay. uh, this, is, this is the one for you. So Excellent. definitely... Uh, it's a party. I can't. I can't wait to see your reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Murray from IDW. Thank you very much for Absolutely. joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank Thanks, you for guys. watching.